We just want to take this time to talk about a partnership we have now. We're promoting Iron Beard and all of our, most of the old blokes on this podcast have beards, so why not get some help looking after them? Iron Beards is a local Australian company that makes high quality beard oils and balm with 100% natural, organic and vegan friendly ingredients like hemp oil, natural seed oil and argon oil. They offer products like Black Forest Beard Balm, Valhalla Beard Balm and Oil Spice Rum Beard Balm. That's going to be my favourite. Fresh Rain Beard Oil and many more products. They've even got a deodorant and dog nose and paw balm. If you're interested, be sure to check out their Instagram page, all one word, at Iron Beard Oil and Balm. Their Iron Beard Oil and Balm on Instagram to shop for your needs. We just want to take this time to talk about a partnership we have now. We're promoting Iron Beard. Hey gang, this is an interview we did with Hayden from Secret Sneaker Store. He's the manager of their Melbourne office. Uh, we wanted to check in with him. There's some stuff going on. Obviously, COVID-19 has affected the way they work. We wanted to talk with him how they're coping and how they've adapted. We also talk some sneakers. Uh, we also get some IKEA knowledge from Dan as we talk to him. I uh, hope you would enjoy. All right. So, hey, we've got Dan here today from the Secret Sneaker Store. Hey, buddy, how are you? Um, pretty good, man. I hate to be inside all the time, but huh. um, yeah, it's a bit different getting used to it. Well, welcome back. Thank you for joining us. We're doing Zoom now. We've upgraded our technology. It used to be just phone. Now we've got you on the, we've got you on the screen. You, you can't hide yeah. now. Yes, but the time's called for deficit measures. Here oh, we are. We just got to get some better back screens. Look at my green screen. It's my. Looks like I'm in a kid's bedroom. Yeah, I was looking. There's a lot to look at, though. It's interesting. <laughs> so if you're looking past me, it's not because you're looking at me. It's because you're looking at all the amazing yeah, stuff. Right? I'm curious. Yeah. Um, so, hey, we thought we'd get you back on, mate. It's been a while. I think a few months since we last had you on on the pod. We thought we want to talk. A bit changed since we've last talked in the world of sneakers. Yeah, I mean, everything's kind of changed as a whole. But, um... You're right about the sneakers, I say. Definitely. So, hey, so how is it going for you guys at the Secret Sneaker Store? Obviously, Melbourne's your focal point. How are you guys looking at the moment? Obviously, a couple was about six weeks ago when you had to pivot, I'm guessing? Yeah. Um, I'd say we've kind of moved into the change okay. Um, we did have a very strong online presence to begin with. I think that's one thing that's kind of set us up aside from a lot of other stores. We already had a, quite a strong infrastructure set up for online um we did take quite a big hit a few weeks back actually melbourne central said no one's allowed to enter the building oh, and wow. as a result we can't ship out of melbourne central <laughs> so we've had to transfer all of our stock to chadston so chadston are working double time shipping their stock and melbourne central stock oh, so what so, are you doing working obviously you're at home today do you go into the short store much you're working out of chadston or no, nah, so it's been it's been kind of quiet for me actually. Um, I've had yeah, a few holidays. yeah, exactly. It feels weird. I'm not used to having this much time, like forty hours a week, free again. Yeah, it's weird. Um, yeah. But no, nah, doing some odd jobs. Like when I do get clearance to go into the store, some cleaning, that kind of stuff. Um, but aside from that, now that um, now that we've had kind of job keeper cleared through, yeah. um, a lot of the staff, including myself, are getting some tasks to complete at home. And that's just kind of just general business research, that kind of stuff. Okay. So, yeah, I was going to ask you about that. So, obviously, Melbourne Central closes down. What did you get up, end up? So, you got JobKeeper stuff. What else are you keeping busy with? Oh, JobKeeper. I mean, finally catching up on all that uni. Um, <laughs> done, yeah. final year. My final year subjects. I just want to get it over and done with. This is kind of a blessing. It makes everything, gives me more time to do it. The thing is, am I actually going to do it? But... Uh, um, <laughs> if you can't do it now, mate, you can never do it, right? Exactly, exactly. So I'm trying to gun through it all. But aside from that, um, I've gone for a lot of bike rides. I mean, caring a lot more about my health, you know, eating good, cooking. Um, yeah, I think it's just been good to relax and kind of get all that time back. I did see one thing on one of your, I don't know, what Instagram posts that uh, the monitor you were looking at, I reckon it was about two meters wide, that, that yeah. half moon monitor. That's it was crazy. amazing. I, honestly, I, I, I saw Centacom was having a sale and I was like, oh, I was looking at getting a monitor and I saw that and I'm like, who, who's buying this thing? This thing is gigantic. You could see four people behind that. <laughs> that was phenomenal. Yeah. That was phenomenal. Was it just one monitor or was it you could play more people on it? Or? Well, it was a single monitor, but you could easily fit three people behind it comfortably sitting. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was amazing. All right. Tell me some stuff about sneaker world at the moment. How is the sneaker community, you reckon, going? What's your feel? Um, I think I think it's interesting as well because working in 
um, a business that obviously sells and moves a lot of sneakers, yep. we do come into contact with a lot of resellers, either kind of big or small. And obviously, a lot of the time, these big resellers maintain a cash flow. So in order to buy more sneakers, they have to sell old stock. Yeah, yeah. The thing with quarantine and people not having much money is no one's really buying so these people that are stuck with huge amounts of stock trying to flog it off because at the end of the day, they've got to pay off credit cards that they've used to buy those big amounts. Mm-hmm. It's kind of interesting. The same thing with new drops as well. I feel like a lot of people, maybe especially kids in these resellers that don't actually have the capital yeah. to buy now, it's, they're kind of just, you know, waiting around. They don't know what to do. It's definitely so, people. I think the older, the older collectors are sort of with a bit more cash are sort of doing well. A couple of our old blokes are... <laughs> You know, I don't think their spending has actually gone down. I think it's gone up for a couple of years for Joel and Lukey. So they've sort of, the Jordan range, have done a whole lot of the Jordan stuff. Lukey got the um, off-white Jordan 5s, the last release. I think they got a couple of pairs of those. So yeah, sort of a really interesting time at the moment. Hey, um, I was going to ask you also, so obviously you've got these markets. Are you seeing uh, price reductions on stuff at the moment? Um, We are to an extent. We've launched another sale actually. this isn't our stock, but it is to allow, allow our consigners to kind of drop prices and move stock a bit quicker. Yeah. Um, yeah. The other good thing about being a collector and buying now is obviously people are clearing stock. So yeah. people are willing to go lower, willing to move things faster. So if you've got the cash, now's a good time to buy. Yeah. It's actually yeah. definitely a buyer's market, isn't it? I, um, we've been saying sort of where we've been against, there's been a few stores definitely not the secret sneaker store but a few stores have been trying to cash in on this they've been a bit vulture like have you seen much of that stuff going on i mean personally not really but i'm not not surprised it's happening right now i mean you look at any kind of market and even people reselling nintendo switches like a lot of the interesting thing is a lot of the facebook groups i mean for buying and selling sneakers there was one that does raffles as well. Yeah. And they've moved from buying it from raffling sneakers and clothes to raffling Nintendo Switches for $800. $40 <laughs> off. So uh, you awesome. know, I'm laughing because Max has just turned 21 and he goes, oh, I'm going to buy myself a Nintendo Switch, got some money. Yeah. We didn't know they were sold out across the whole freaking world. It's amazing. I just can't believe the things that are sold out in this world. And that's one yeah, of them, isn't yeah. it? Unbelievable. Yeah. You know, the other one that we had a problem with, obviously everyone has decided they got a home office. Trying to get a desk. It's impossible to get a desk. It's unbelievable. It's like the little things in the life. You go, how the hell are these things? And gym equipment, I heard, is the other one. It's off the yeah. charts mental at the moment. I've actually been in Ikea. I'm sorry. I've been in Ikea the last few mornings trying yeah. to bloody get a desk. I was at Ikea at 10 a.m. this morning. because Someone told me, the staff told me they were meant to restock. I got yeah. there at 10 a.m. She's like, oh, sorry. I meant yesterday. Like tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so you're back there. You're back there tomorrow, though. Oh, yeah. Until I get a desk. So you talked about the drops, right? What have you seen? You reckon they're pausing a lot of that stuff? Do you think they're moving them out? Do you reckon it's all, it's mostly gone on the line, obviously, right? Yeah, so yeah. How are you seeing that happening? Um, well, I mean, I definitely don't think, um, you know, the AAA labels, yeah, Adidas and stuff are stopping the drops, the releases. They, they seem to keep going. I think the shift towards online has kind of changed the game as well. Mm. Um, obviously, a lot of these websites, all these independent stores, like um for instance up their store which a lot of people will go to for the limited releases they don't really have systems built to deal with people botting and to deal with these large amounts of orders so the other interesting thing in terms of those big resellers is they're cashing out on these small websites that don't have proper infrastructure yeah. and that's stopping you know the genuine buyers that want them for themselves from getting the pairs that they want mm. yeah it's interesting isn't it it's a really thing i think some of this stuff will change. I reckon it might eliminate that lining up line piece eventually because we were talking about that the other day. Yeah. So what do you think about that? Do you think it ends up going all online eventually when we get back to normal? You see, that's the thing. I mean, like, obviously it's in the best, I mean, it's in the best interest of most people that care about the community to make the raffles as fair as possible. Yeah. But as long as these kind of smaller independent stores are getting them, if they're not getting the funding to kind of build these systems or it's not worth it to them, mm-hmm. then yeah because i mean i've I've heard stores like supply spend upwards of 10k a month just maintaining their raffle oh, wow. um detection system yeah oh, and that's yeah. just to maintain you know to make sure that people don't multiple do multiple entries and it's 10k yeah, a month too, yeah. Yeah. Big, big hit on your your revenue and your, exactly, your, your yeah. margin obviously isn't that great 10 grand is a lot of money for a small store yeah well that's so, what i've heard at least so so let's pivot we talked about you guys a little bit before mm-hmm. so you guys had the infrastructure so 
How are you yep. dealing with this sort of stuff? Um, it's, it's been not bad. We're dealing with it as a correct term. Um, interestingly enough, um, we're predominantly consignment based, so we don't buy much of the stock ourselves. The issue with that then comes in is, um, we're not taking consignments because we obviously we're trying to minimize the contact between people for the sake of the virus. So if we can't bring in stock, then obviously what do we have to sell? So the, the meeting that I had this morning actually got scheduled to after this. And that's a big thing we're going to be talking about. Um, how do we deal with taking in consignments? Cause obviously we have regular sellers that want to sell with us, but um, we've taken a firm stance of minimizing as much interaction. As spread. Social conscience, mate. It's very good. Yeah. Um, so obviously, okay, you can't do your consignment. How is the actual, I was going to ask you, how's your um, sort of periphery stuff going? You know, you obviously got your uh, kick stuff and all that. Is there much of that being sold online or is that just sort of stopped and it's just being shoe stuff? Um, no, everything else has kind of remained the same, if not gone up. I think one of the biggest things in oh. terms of sneaker businesses and everything is being able to adapt to the fact that people are shopping from home. So one thing that... um we did at the start was my boss was live streaming most nights from the store it was kind of like a shopping channel if you will i love it i love it yeah yeah. so i that was one thing that i think in terms of because we are still quite a small business it's what you're really willing to do to adapt and i think in that essence him putting in his time uh to do that most people are going to be at home anyway what better do they have to do than sit in a live stream and spend the money spend the money buying stuff yeah agreed yeah Hey, um, so let's talk about some specific shoes that are out at the moment. Let's, let's get a bit happier. We've done all the, we've done all the boring stuff. Yeah. Um, anything at the moment that you've been really keen on that's come out on the market? Um, I think probably the interest, most interesting one and one that I was looking at to pick up a few weeks ago um, was the Nike MX Zoom Spiritons with Stussy. Nice. Lovely pair. The detailing on it as well when I saw it in person, I was a bit skeptical at the start. Yep. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, like, aside from that, seeing a pair retro like that and brought back into the market and kind of being, you know, welcomed with open arms is good to see. Yeah, it's good. It's a nice I, pair, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. But um, I have seen stores like Subtype post new colorways that they're meant to drop. I yeah. don't think the Stussy collab was enough to really revive the pair. No. But um, I guess we'll see how they sell. Hmm. What else, Matty? What else has been good, been interesting for you? Seeing you've got so much time on your hands, you should be well-researched with all this stuff, mate. Oh, yeah, look. I don't know. I think the other thing now is just now that I've got my job keeper, I'm good to go. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Aside from that, I did cop a... I, got, I copped a pair of customs. Um, so a limited one out of 100 um, from a hip-hop collective in the US. Oh, no. Nice. But, I mean, aside from that, it's been, it's been a bit quiet. I did get the... Um, I got the neon Jordan 4s. Beautiful. Just, You've done well. You, you keep saying I've only got a few. There, there's three, three good pairs you brought to your set, set mate, your stash. Yeah, yeah. Look, I, I feel like I've been tame recently, though. So uh, <laughs> maybe because the coronavirus stuff wasn't going on, my wardrobe would be a bit fatter. But, um, yeah, right. yeah, no, I think that, you know, classic colorway, um, seeing the MX-95, and I think it's, yeah, the reason why I liked it. Beautiful. Hey, anything about, else that's coming, coming up lately? I'll, I'll, I'll tell you how little I've done in a minute. What about anything else that's coming up in the next couple of months, you think, you like? Um, nothing else that's been really on my radar, to be honest. Um, sneakers right now haven't been too much of a big thing for me. I'm chasing that Alex Ikea desk in a way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we haven't looked at that as well. We had that as well. well hey, yeah. you're going to ask me about my sneaker collection. I've actually, last pair I added, it was probably the Ralph Sampson Pumas. I got the white and the black ones. And that was just before COVID. And I keep going on, but I'm not sure at the moment. I think I want to cop a custom pair. We've been talking to a guy named Govan in the States. Yeah. He does some really amazing stuff. But he's taken a break as well. And I was trying to get him to do a, a custom pair for me. I was actually trying to get him to do an old bloke's love sneakers. Oh, they were crazy. Pair. Yeah. Yeah, so he's pretty keen, but he just sort of stopped. He said, oh, I've got a couple of months off. But... He's up in the 3,000 to 5,000 range. So he's a, he's a decent customs dude. He makes them. So he actually makes, he doesn't just paint them. So yeah. So yeah, we have been, materials, yeah. I'm probably out of the old, the old blokes. I've got the least in the last six months. Joel and uh, Luke have really upped their game. Luke's yeah. gone PG4 mad. 
Yeah. So he's copped the uh, Gatorade colorway. He was chasing the All Star one. I showed him the black and white. I don't know if you've seen the PG4. It's got black on one side and white on the other. Hmm. So he's chasing those as well. Um, yeah, but Joel has added about three different pairs of Jordans to his mix. He got the original, you know, the OG Jordan 5s that just come out. Yeah. Right. Yeah, he ended up copying a couple of pair of those. So look, our guys are keeping their end up. I'm just the one who's being a bit Thanks, slack at the moment. Yeah. But I use exercise gear. I'm, all I'm doing at the moment is exercising with my runners. I've got, like, I've got no shoes on now. I've got just socks on, you know. You wander around <laughs> the house and yeah. shop most days. It's been terrible. Hey, um, so tell us what we can do to help you, my man. What can we do to help Secret Sneaker Store in Melbourne? No, perfect. Thanks for asking. Um, so, I mean, to kind of deal with all of this, we, we, first thing we've kind of got up is we've got to sell, we've got some pretty sweet items up to 40% off. Beautiful. So, we've got a bit of a tiered system. I think one of the pairs that I was looking at, not that it is my size, but um, it was a pretty good price, was a pair of um, weird Travis Scott Air Force One, something like 40% off down from about a thousand. So at 600 market price, it's lower than market price. I'm pretty sure right now. Um, but aside from that, we That's do have some, good price. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some of the older Jordans, I thought, I think I saw a, pair, a few pairs of Jordan 13s about 20 or 30% off. So I think in that aspect, um, if you, if anyone is lists, uh, for those who are listening, um, check out um, our website because we've got everything linked up on the banner and you can have a look. Definitely. We might get you to we might get you to pass some stuff on to Maxi and we'll put them up on our post and we'll talk about them for you, mate, because we want to keep you in business. I can't I can't get you going out of business. I won't be able to talk. Who am I going to talk to if you're not around? <laughs> no pressure. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, uh, anything else you want to mention, matey? So it's been a really good to talk to you again. We will definitely get you on. No, 100%. I think um, hopefully we get out of this. I think one of the scariest things about sneakers and everything like that is we don't really know how long it's going to go for. Definitely. So, um, yeah. Hey, I what we you know, you to do? Next time is we'll get you to bring a couple of these pairs you've talked about and we'll get them up here. And I loved your online shopping idea. I might talk to Ed and see if we can help out there. We can live stream it or something through a few of our oh, channels. Yeah, yeah. You, can, you can walk around the store and all blokes can help you sell some of your gear so we can keep the lights on, mate. Yeah, sounds good. We'd love that. Hey, you be well. Thank you again, mate, for spending some time with us. We really appreciate it every time you do and we'll help you out wherever we can, my man. No, no purchase. If you guys want to chat anytime, simply um, let me know. It's been great. I might do a cross plug. We've just started an Instagram live in the mornings called uh, Spilling the Kicks. It's about 10 or 15 minutes and I jump on with somebody. We talk about a pair they've been wearing in the last seven days and then something they've got in their stash. I might mm -hmm. drag you on one of these mornings in the next couple of weeks, mate. You can come and Definitely. I might have to get you up early. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. Will you be up at that time? Uh, I've been made. Maintaining at 8 30. I'm trying to build a routine. So 8 30, I'm up. Look at you. I actually tried to get someone the other day and he goes, Sure, 11 30 ish. I'm no problem. I was like, No, no, it's 10 o'clock. He went, Why that early? What are you doing? I'm like, 10 o'clock is not early. It's half the day's gone. I completely agree. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. We'll get you on, mate, and you can show some of these, show a couple of those pairs you talked about. I'd love to see them. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Thank you, my man. Thanks again, and we will be in touch. No, no problems. Thanks, guys. If you need anything no, else, no just way. let me know. Thanks, mate. We'll speak to you soon, Aiden. Easy.